Hello my beautiful PhD friends. So today we're gonna to talk about PhD versus masters. What's best for you and the differences? Let's talk about that. If you're new to this channel, please remember to subscribe and hit that bell notification because I am gonna talk about everything I learned about doing a PhD, all the mistakes I made and how you can make yours an awesome experience if you decide to do one and that's completely up to you. Okay, let's talk about the differences between a PhD versus a masters. The first thing I wanna do is talk about the difference between a PhD and a masters. So let's look at a masters first. Now, a master's is the first postgraduate qualification that you can obtain. And what that means is that you need an undergraduate degree in a field related to that master's. So, um, for example, in science, you can go from a bachelor's of science to a master's of science. Um, now, I actually did a undergraduate masters. Now don't get too confused. I don't even know if this exists anymore, but it is called an MCHEM. So M-C-H-E-M. -E and it was a four year undergraduate degree that resulted in a master's level qualification. So there could be something like that, but the majority of people do an undergraduate thing first, and then they go on to do a master's. Now a master's takes about two years in general, and it kind of combines some research work um, with uh, like some coursework. So, you know, attending some lectures, doing some exams, doing some coursework, that sort of stuff. So it's kind of in between, well, it's definitely in between a undergraduate and a PhD, but in terms of the mix of the activities, it's definitely in there. So it's kind of like undergrad and, and it's kind of like a little taste of doing a PhD. Now these things are moving on so fast that in a couple years time, this video may be out of date and masters may mean something else to another field or another institution. So it's a constantly evolving thing, but that's kind of where it's, it's at at the moment. A master's allows for specialization in a certain area. So for example, if you are a uh, chemist like I was, you can do a master's of science um, and then that kind of specializes you even more down the science route. Um, and there are tons of masters. Like I come from a very sciencey background. So all of my examples are gonna be around science, but there are tons and tons of uh, master's courses that specialize you in a certain area. Now, the thing about a master's is that uh, it's kind of, like I said, part coursework, part research, and it specializes you really for career advancement. So a master's can't allow you to lecture in a university necessarily or become a an academic in a university. It's really kind of a specialization that opens up more career options for when you enter the real world um, and you wanna access those higher pay scales. Um, it's great for kind of separating you out from people that have just done a bachelor's. Um, and yeah, so think of it as kind of like a teaser to PhD, but also more career focused than doing a PhD. Um, and like I said, it takes normally about two years to complete a, a master's full time. A PhD on the other hand is something that I've got a lot of experience in. Um, and yes, look, boom, this hefty tome is my PhD thesis. Look at it, look at it. Look at it. Anyway, a PhD is the highest degree you can possibly earn. So it goes undergraduate, masters, PhD, and a PhD is between three and six years of like research, of creating new knowledge about the world. Um, it's completely research based, so there may be a few kind of like optional things. One thing I really like about the PhD at the moment, it seems to be transforming a little bit because universities are realizing that they're pissing off all these people by um, telling them they can do a PhD and then having no career options for them. So now PhDs, there is an option to include different 
uh, courses and things in there. So you kind of come out with a PhD and some, some experience in industry or some experience in uh, lecturing or so, you know, that sort of thing. So there are a few more skills now that can be swept up in a PhD. Um, and uh, traditionally it has been research focused only. And that means you enter your first year as a PhD student and you generally do a PhD after a master's um, or after an honours year in Australia, which is a little bit different as well. But uh, yeah, you don't necessarily need to have a master's, but generally that's the route is bachelor's, master's, PhD. And so that is the highest you can earn. Um, and yeah, in your first day of a PhD student, you poop yourself because <laughs> it's challenging, right? It's, it's really tough. Um, and what essentially you do is come up with a research question that's created by you or more likely your supervisor, and then you use science or you use research to test that research hypothesis. Mine was, can you create a solar panel using paint? Create a solar paint was essentially my, um, my thesis direction and my research question. Um, and yes, you can, and we got a little bit of the way there. And I did that over three years, but it's not uncommon for a PhD to go from three to six years. And I even heard of someone who was there after 10 years Oh, and people were saying, oh, but his thesis is excellent. I was like, you better hope it would be after 10 years. Anything less would be an absolute waste. When you've got a PhD, it essentially opens up everything to you. Everything in the academic world. You can lecture, you can start your own research group, which is incredibly competitive. You probably won't go there. Um, but a PhD is much more stressful than a master's. Um, it relies on you being motivated, it relies on you being organized, it relies on you having persistence when things aren't going so well, and that's what really separates a PhD out from pretty much anything else you're gonna do. Okay, let's take a look at the benefits of um, the masters and PhD, and then how I would choose based on kind of three selection criteria. Um, okay, let's look at those now. Okay, the quick benefits of a masters, are that it takes less time. Like if you've only got a little bit of time, masters is for you. And also, if you're not sure that academia is where you wanna be, doing a masters is much more career focused. It seems to be much more accepted in the business world and industry than a PhD. Like when you've got a PhD, some people say like, oh, you're too specialized, which is insane but it is a reality. I think that kind of narrative is changing a little bit now after there's just so many PhD students, people kind of understand what they are. Um, and it's kind of like a little bit of a tester for a PhD. So you can enroll as a master's and upgrade if your thesis, or sorry, if your literature review and your um, research question is going well and you look like you can achieve it. So it is kind of that first tester of um, the postgraduate world. Now the thing is, is I'm talking about this as if you do like mm, bachelor's, master's, like it's all hard work, but it's different work. And it may be that a master's, even though you absolutely rocked a, a undergraduate, a bachelor's, it may be that a master's, like that different challenge just isn't for you and that's fine. And on the same side, if you did a bachelor's, and you're like, oh, this is a bit rubbish. You may actually thrive in a master's kind of environment because it's just so different. And that goes for PhD as well. So it's all different challenges and there's no reason why you can't try some of these out and then downgrade or upgrade or whatever as you find out whether or not you like it. Okay, the benefits of a PhD. I've done a whole video on the benefits of a PhD, so I'll link that wherever that goes around there. Um, but in short, you become an expert, right? Like you spend three to six years understanding a very small part of the world. And the way that a PhD kind of is described to me is imagine like there's a sphere uh, where this is all human knowledge. And what you do is you push on that boundary a little bit and you may not even be able to see what you've actually done to make the world a better place but everyone's pushing out on this sphere and it's just getting bigger and bigger and the PhD is your 
you'd like a little tiny push on that sphere um, and you know the person behind you will push even further and our knowledge and our understanding of the world will grow. Um, and you're an expert in that tiny little pinpoint of pushing out into the human knowledge sphere. Um, you also gain a lot of research skills, which is obvious you just spend, you know, three to six years absolutely just in research hell. Like, I talk about it as if it's a bad thing. Like, it's a challenge, right? And if you like challenges, a PhD can be fantastic for you. I certainly didn't, don't regret doing mine, but I wish I had approached it with different eyes. Um, and I'll do a video on that later, you know, about whether or not a PhD was worth it. Um, and ultimately, you know, when you do research, you have to communicate your skills. You communicate via writing, you communicate via presentations, you communicate via all of these different ways. And that's all kind of wrapped up. And like I said, check out my other video um, on my channel about the PhD benefits and it will run through everything, like all of the side things that happen um, and also what you should be promoting when you get out the other side. Now, I'd like to cover how do you choose to do a PhD or a master's? And I think broadly it comes down to three criteria. The first one is what do you want to achieve? What's the purpose of doing a master's or a PhD? Now it can be ego driven, right? And I've talked about this before in my other videos where it can be that you're just like, oh, I want to achieve the highest degree possible. And, and I think that's part of everyone's PhD journey. Um, but if you want to become an academic or you're really, really interested about a certain topic and you're almost like obsessive about it, a PhD is probably the great thing for you to do on that subject. Um, a, you know, a master's on the other hand, if you're like, you know what, I just wanna get some qualifications that allow me to demonstrate a specialization or show that I'm really competent in this particular area, then boom, master's is fantastic for you. Um, so you really have to write down what you want to achieve. And I would write down probably the top three things that you wanna achieve. And the first one may be, I want to feed my ego, which is fine, you know, then you start considering a PhD. Um, yeah, so write down the top three reasons why you actually want to do either a master's or a PhD and go from there. The second thing is how much time do you really have? Like you can do master's part time and it take like four or five years. If you're doing a PhD part time, it can really blow out to like 10 years, which is scary, right? You know, that's not an insignificant amount of time. So if you've only got a couple of years full time equivalent study, um, you know, a master's is where sensibly you can really achieve the, your goal of getting that, that higher education um, qualification. But if you are a bit younger, you know, PhDs tend to be just outside out of um, undergraduate, so out of their bachelors. So they tend to be in that kind of early 20s area. I was 23, I think, Ooh, when I did my, when I started my PhD. Um, and so, yeah, you know, you time doesn't matter to these people, or at least it didn't matter to me. I'm like, I'm gonna live forever. Um, and, you know, three years, I was like, well, I just spent three years doing undergraduate or four years doing under, undergraduate, another three or four years, whatever, you know, I'll just carry on doing this. But if you're a little bit older, you may not have the time to invest in a PhD. So a master's is, is fantastic for you. Um, and it is a long time. There's no doubt about it, right? That being there with a PhD in front of you is intimidating, it's hard, and uh, it may just not be for you, and, and that's absolutely fine. So a master's is a really great option if you wanna reduce the time. Um, yeah, and also look, I wanna say, there is no actual monetary benefit to doing a PhD beyond 3%. So if someone's got a master's, they get about 23% more than the average person, and a PhD is 26%. So, you know, are the extra two to five years better for 
for you for that extra 3%. It doesn't seem to make sense if you're only doing it for monetary gain. Um, so yeah, there we are. And the third thing that I think is very important is what process will you enjoy more? Right, like are you a sort of person that loves to push themselves to the stream? Do you like to personally challenge yourself all the time? If so, do a PhD. Like that is the ultimate test of you, your knowledge, your persistence, your skills, all of that. Whereas some people just don't like that. You, you know, don't like being wrong all the time. Don't like having critical feedback from supervisors. Don't like having peer review. You know, all of those things are a reality of doing a PhD. Whereas a master's is kind of a bit more chill. You know, it's about going through some coursework. It's about doing a, a small research project. Um, that's much sort of healthier potentially for your mental health, which is weird to say out loud. Um, but yeah, so a PhD really is a stretch of you, your persistence, not necessarily how clever you are, but how much you're willing to commit to an idea and a research uh, proposal for th you know three to six years. Whereas a master's, um, yeah, you can you can get it done. It's kind of you can always see the end. The, th the thing about a PhD is you're never sure where the end is, but with a master's, you're like, okay, two years, I go through these steps, I jump through these hoops, I'm gonna get it. Um, and that's just not what happens with a PhD. The, the end is fuzzy in the distance somewhere and you're like, oh, you're just kind of fumbling towards it. But yeah, it's much more challenging. So if you enjoy the unknown, PhD, if you want a bit of more certainty, but you want to express yourself and you need to get through the process, then a master's is fantastic. And you have to enjoy the process, you know, getting through a, uh, a postgraduate qualification re requires you to actually enjoy the process. If you don't enjoy the process, you will not do it to the best of your ability. And you'll just hate two to six years of your life, which is rubbish what a, you know like life is short you don't have infinite amount of time even though you may feel like it when you're younger um and what's the point of in not enjoying a huge portion of your life okay there we have it there's phd versus masters now it comes down to you and what you want so be very clear on that before you start making a decision speak to a career coach or speak to people you trust to help you make that decision good luck with your decision and i shall see you in the next video